Hi guys, in this episode of the Nostalgia Trip, I'm gonna be continuing with my reactions to one of my favorite shows ever, Ghost Whisperer. Currently, we are on season 1, episode 9, Voices, and episode 10, Ghost Bride. And just like for the last two episodes, I actually have no idea what these two episodes are gonna be about, because the names of the episodes don't ring any bells, nor do they give me any kind of clue, so... I literally don't know what to expect about them, but I'm hoping that I'm going to enjoy them because for the last two episodes, the fact that I didn't remember anything about them based on the thumbnails or on the names of the episodes meant that I actually ended up enjoying those episodes quite a lot. So I'm hoping that it's going to be the case for these two as well. But before we get into the reaction, I do want to remind you that you can get a full land version uh, of these reactions over on my Patreon or onto my coffee account where by subscribing to the specific tire I've created for it you get access to all of my uh, full length reactions to my movie, to the movies that I react to, to these TV shows that I react to and to the cartoons that I react to. You can also, if you're interested, just go with the cartoons because they are on a separate tire but if you go for the tire that I've created for uh, these shows specifically you get access to the other ones as well. It's kind of like a, on a discount kind of thing. But yeah, um, I think that's it. So without further ado, let's just jump into the reaction and finish off um, my re reactions to the show for this recording session at least. Um, now, so without further ado, let's get into voices in 3, 2, 1. Okay. Okay, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, I don't think that waiter got your sense of humor. Yeah, I think it's because he's looking at you so much. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about? No, no, no. She insists on taking a cab. You know, she likes to think she's low maintenance. Ah, because we all. She always has for a reason. What? This is exactly where I parked the car. I know this is asking a lot, but would you consider not pressing charges? I'll, I'll pay for the damage. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's okay. I really appreciate that. Well, what is uh, with the, the kid? She's sensing something. She's gotta be. What is with that look? What are you sensing, Melinda? Oh, he messed with your stations. We should prosecute. Let's go back. <laughs> you know what my problem is? I need to wait that was a good joke. 16 and get over all this adult crap. Hello? There are handsome paramedic in this house? No. But there is a, a, a handsome lady with an antique shop. Hey, it's Andrea. You were right about those stake sale in Lake Lodge. Give me a call. Jim, it's Tommy. Can you take the 412 shift next Tuesday? Hey, you're supposed to pay for those. Keep a track. Alright, what's up with you and Ellis? What about me and Ellis? Ellis spoken two words to the guy. Nothing. Sure. Does it bother you that him and your mom? Hey, 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 hey. Do we have to put a name on it? Huh? <laughs> I don't care. He seems like a perfectly nice Wait, guy. Uh, why is every episode in which uh, Jim's mom shows up, Jim is because the funniest Jim, guy ever? He's an Nordic goddess with huge pastries. Oh. Are you alright? Give me that. Is it the same as one before? Yeah. Weird voices again on the answering machine. I listened to him twice and been sick all night. Don't listen to him. <laughs> that is so male. I love that. It seems simple to me. Look, are you sure these things aren't explainable in like cell phone transmissions? No, they're not. You know how I can sense spirits, like I can feel what they're feeling? Now I'm on overload. It's like tasting too many foods at once. I don't like this is making you sick. Yeah, but why? Why is this suddenly simply happening? Simply trying to apply scientific explanation to phenomena that's... Oh, we're already introducing a science guy to deal with the 
crazy stuff, huh? Statistics. Most of the voices seem to most. I thought that was season two thing. Between regular broadcast stations, but it's not just radio. You know, it can happen with anything electronic. Uh, TVs, monitors, uh, VCRs, etc. Most people really don't know exactly how or why it works. <laughs> most people believe it's caused by ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts? Do you? <laughs> I'd answer that truthfully, but I may be endangering my tenure. Let's just say, uh, I like to keep an open mind. Same. I don't believe yeah, in ghosts, said, yeah, uh, but messages. if I saw a ghost, I wouldn't say, well, um, nope, it's the not there. Are hidden under my other messages, oh. and um, I'm also hearing voices. And I've definitely had my oh, yeah. share of scary and creepy experiences. One that I honestly want to talk about, and I feel like I mentioned recently in some video I might have. But it was really fucking creepy, and it's the one that I genuinely like feels like it actually fucking happened. Like there was something there. Actually, have two now that I think about it. Very typical. Most of the voices seem to be in mid conversation, some asking questions. There's one female voice which seems to pop. She doesn't seem to be in conversation as much as trying to get someone to hear her. I've never seen it make you sick before. Don't make it bigger than it is, you know? I just can't get control of this one. My point. It's a bad thing. Look, do you ever think there'll be a day where you can say, you know, sorry, I can't help you. You're not can good you, for me. Can you do... You're making me sick. You're making me cry. Can you say that you to somebody you're, you're supposed to help, uh, Jim? You're a paramedic. Mm -hmm. She is a paramedic for Should the dead. Help. If you can't say that to the living, why do you expect her to say that to the dead? Mm, it's the same. A glass of water, you want anything? Who's the patience? Mm, always in short supply. No, that's the one thing that Something always bothered me about Jim's character. Me. Like, he always was, like... Reluctantly... Open... To the ghost stuff. And there are moments where he really gets angry about it. <laughs> I think the reason why the electronic stuff creeps me out more is because of the trauma that I have from the goddamn The Ring movie. Because that shit fucking traumatized me genuinely. To the point where I'm afraid of like... I used to be afraid of like just being in a room with an old school TV. And that doesn't help because that's some fucking ring shit. All about electricity in this one, huh? So she knew a lot about electronics. Yes. Spirits need our energy to manifest. She's out in the woods, there's no one there for her to draw on. She's probably trying to communicate with the only thing that's familiar. How do you know all this? That's what I do. Spirit part, anyway. There was a broken power line at the bottom of the well. Oh, she was already dead. Man, they're really using a lot of different effects for the ghost in the last few episodes. Don't break the window, you're gonna be sorry for that. Don't! Well, now you're definitely going to prison. But to be honest, his mom is causing this as well. He wasn't gonna break into this place if it wasn't for her. Please don't come out of the fucking TV.
Okay, that's a creepy ass mask in the background. That is just terrifying, man. And it just really shows to me how traumatized I have been by the ring. Because just seeing the static with a ghostly figure in it creeps the fuck out of me. You know, I feel like at the rate at which Melinda helps people in fucking Grandview, by the end of season 5 she must have helped most people in Grandview. So most people should know she can fucking speak to ghosts. It's about a young man who doesn't know how to tell his father that he's gay. Oh! Bailing me out doesn't make up for what you did. Maybe it's Okay, I did not see that coming. It was beautiful. It made me cry and it was obviously written by somebody with a great heart. Look, Jimmy. I understand, I do. Your mother's a wonderful woman, we both know that, but she's been hurt, she's lost, she's vulnerable. You're looking out for her. That's something else I admire. Ellis, I don't know where to begin to apologize. Forget it, huh? I've been through a few things myself, you know. Ups and downs in business. First wife passed away. Yeah. We all have our wounds, kid, right? Not as big as the one I'd like to inflict on myself right now. <laughs> I may mean, not be Jesus a college Jim. guy, but uh, oh, man. I've made some good moves. I love me these episodes in which Jim mom, is just mom. such a jokester, hey, man. Wanna go get some ice cream? Say we it's like the two episodes in which his mom has appeared has been the two funniest episodes with him. I can't believe it. This is what my mother really wanted to be, with her lover. Don't do this, just talk to me. Don't worry. Oh, come on, you're more mad about it than your father. We moved away. I personally really think it's stupid when people get mad about things like this. You know? If she didn't love his father, then she didn't love his father. She wanted to be with somebody else. I think I would personally be more annoying with the hiding of it rather than the act of it itself. Who's gonna tell me that everything's gonna be okay now? Oh my god, that's super imposing. That was so bad, what the fuck? How to love. It's so hard. I know. Man, the effects in this episode have kind of really flipped, flip flopped from being really good, or should I say scary, but bad looking, to just bad looking. I did a pretty stupid thing. This is about Ellis. Oh? Yeah, did he mention it? No. Um, I apologize to him, and I'd like to apologize to you, because uh, I've been kind of a jerk when it comes to Ellis. Kind of? <laughs> a total, complete, you don't even want to know kind of jerk. I wouldn't have brought him if I thought he couldn't handle it. Wait, wait, you knew that I was... My instinct said just show up and let Ellis be Ellis and Jim be Jim and it'll all just sort itself out. <laughs> I think you might regret to let Jim be Jim for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> this is for you. Man, she looks so good with that outfit. Okay, <clears throat> not a bad episode. Um, I would say it was definitely entertaining, but I really had some issues with this one. Uh, at least when it comes to the ghosts, 
Because, like, I appreciate that it's a different way of communicating and it's presented visually in a different way as well, but it was really annoying trying to go out of my way to try to understand what the fuck the ghost was saying all the time. I, again, I do like the concept of it, uh, uh, of her uh, draining power, uh, using electricity and electrical uh, things to communicate because she died by electricity and that's the only thing around her. Uh, place of death that gives her power but it was really annoying trying to listen to her but I guess it did lead to a lot of cool visuals with it that genuinely creeped me out at least personally because of the trauma that I have incurred by watching horror movies when I was too young to do so but again that's a topic for another video I guess but yeah, um, I really like the plot twist about the kid turning out to be gay. Um, I really did not see that coming. And I kind of like that the show actually dealt with that. I never thought it was going to even bring it up. Uh, it's funny how back in the early 2000s, doing things like this didn't piss off anybody. But nowadays it does. And it's really weird because it, certain things even bother me for whatever reason. I don't know why. Like the recent casting for... The 14th Doctor being a black guy who could potentially be gay, but it does seem that he is at least like, I don't know, queer, I don't know, because he does act very flamboyantly, which is, there's nothing wrong with that, but I just don't really think that's who uh, who the Doctor should be, you know, but I'm getting a, bit, a little bit sidetracked. It's just, I, I want to point out how back then it feels like it was handled in a way where it wasn't annoying but nowadays sometimes things like this are handled in a very annoying way and i don't i sometimes really can't tell the difference and why some things uh some ways in which it's handled piss me off while others don't i really don't know but the point is i like that plot twist there it really seems like a lot of these episodes do seem to have like a plot twist uh in the beginning of the third act i really like that about it though it's pretty cool i'm starting to figure out the formula so I know, and now I'm starting to understand what to look for in the episode. The plot twist being my favorite part so far. But yeah, pretty fun episode. Um, not the best. I don't really expect it to be the best one out of the two. At least hoping that it's not the best one out of the two. Because that would mean that Ghost Bride is going to be a really shitty episode. But... But yeah, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it, but it's definitely not as good as the two episodes that we checked out in the last uh, video. So there's that. Um, in terms of a rating for this episode, I think I'm going to go with like an 8.3 out of 10. And I honestly feel like I've kind of overblown a lot of the ratings for these early episodes. But that is because I don't really have much of a point of comparison when it comes to... Both live action show reactions and in general for this show because we've just begun doing reactions like this. So I don't really have much of a point, anything to compare it to. So I'm like, oh, I actually enjoyed this episode. Let's give it a 10 out of 10. So I guess a more accurate rating to this episode would probably be like a 7.3 out of 10. But I really don't want to go with that rating because I've already rated so many of these episodes at a much higher, uh, with a much higher rating. So to give them, uh, to give this one 7.3 would make it like the worst episode. And I definitely don't think this is the worst episode that we've gotten so far. So yeah, I don't know. I guess pick whichever rating you want to go with. But yeah, I definitely enjoy this episode quite a lot. Um, though not as much as the previous two. So hopefully next one is going to be pretty fun. But there's only one way to find out whether that's going to be the case. So without further ado, let's get into Ghost Bride in 3, 2... One. Oh, come on. Already, right off the bat? Ain't that a bit quick? Is she gonna possess her? <clears throat> I really hope she doesn't. Oh, shit! So much for feeling lucky. You know, I re I'm really getting tired of the typical ghosty stuff. Can you guys figure out new tricks, please? I better take you home. 
What the fuck? Why is that fucking bride so mad? Lisa, do you remember how you said that weird things have been happening? Well, there's a reason for it. Are you gonna tell her right off the bat? You have a spirit attached to you. You're saying I'm haunted? Yeah. She's the one that started the fire at the party. She? Linda, you're freaking me out. Is this a joke? I, I wouldn't have mentioned it if she weren't so... Aggressive. Persistent. You see her. Yeah. But I can't. Yeah. <clears throat> gift I have this thing I can do. Okay, where are the cameras? <laughs> you and Mark are trying to punk me, right? No. She's wearing a wedding dress. What? I can't see her face. She's wearing a veil, but she's young and angry. Serena. Wait, you believe her? That's Wait, you're Melinda's friend. Don't you don't know. I'll did you did she know that Melinda can see ghosts? Already another one? Not now. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's the bride and the broom. In the groom, not the broom. so guilty when I can't help them. As if your plate isn't full enough of Lisa. Hey, did you tell her about the ghost bride? Yeah, and then I got the usual reaction. Of course. Yeah, but then I mentioned that she was in a wedding dress, and that really got her rattled. It meant something. She to knows her, uh -huh. clearly. The plot thickens. I have to get this spirit to cross over before the wedding. Hey, Andrea, this is my channel. I'm supposed to be the one reacting and commentating uh, sarcastically, okay? I gotta tell you, I didn't realize that spirits were this, I don't know, like interactive, I guess? Earthbound spirits usually are not. There's definitely something going on up there. It's like they're getting stronger. Oh. Yep. If I remember correctly, that's a plot that kind of gets repeated every season. Oh, they're getting stronger and more powerful. Because we kind of have to hey. up the stakes. Hey. Come on, Come on. Mark. What if it's Serena? You know, the weird things that have been happening. What if Serena is causing them? How could she be? I don't know. This is nerves, okay? Come here. It's nerves and it's just some And nerves make you see things? I don't think so. I don't know if I can. I can't make a spirit go. Man, I love that we actually get to see a little bit of the background of where the city is located. It's right beside a mountain. That feels so... I don't know, relatable, kind of? Because my little town is like near a mountain like that. I love that yeah, view. It looks so cool. You know, it's I'm a great like view. Maybe they should rename the town the town from Ground View to Great View. I still like the idea of speaking about him with another woman, even though I know he wasn't a monk before he met me. Oh, but come on. You have to be curious. I am curious. I just like to keep them in the abstract. You know, okay, so we went out with a bunch of other women, but it wasn't Elkie, the long-legged Swedish supermodel. Jim dated a supermodel? Not unless you know something I don't. Don't you dare. Hey! Stop that! You know, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this, Serena? How do you know my name? It's not my first barbecue, though. Know. Careful you don't get burned. <laughs> Serena, wait! I can help you! I'm just looking, thanks. <laughs> Hmm. That was awkward. What's happening? It's the book of poetry she gave you. How did you know that? She just told me. Serena? Serena gave you that book? I didn't even read it to her. She was dead. Tell him he better not dare use one of those poems. Tell him! Oh my god! Hey, sir. Hey, wait, where are you going? Does he really think he can forget that easily? 
he clearly hasn't, but that doesn't mean you get to ruin his wedding with with this woman. Why are you doing this to them? This isn't your business. I'm trying to help them and you. I don't need your help, Gidget. How can you call this an antique store when half the items are new? Look, I know that you've been through a lot. Mark has too. Don't you think that he at least deserves a shot at happiness? Happiness? That's relative, don't you think? Weren't you happy? I remember being happy on my wedding day. What a way to die the in your wedding dress. Beautiful. Everything was perfect. Yeah, and, and I can't husband. take that. So that's why I'm never gonna get married. Then on the way to the reception, Mark was driving. Bruce, I realistically, I want to be able to be dressed the way I want to be dressed at a wedding, so Once never gonna we're happen. All talking in the next. <laughs> that's why you wear your seat be seat belts. I'm still wondering why I'm so angry. Can I ask you to do something without there having to be a reason? No. Yes, you can. I'm just... I'm not sure where this is coming from. You're not? <laughs> you are emailing your genius ex-girlfriend who is recently single and... Has and you're being a dumbass, jealous <laughs> bitch. Okay. No, but it just seems... Like a perfectly normal request. I'll do it. It's not really a perfectly normal request. It's a reasonable request, Honey, I gotta say, you but not a normal one. Channeling some weird ghost energy? Or... It's not always about ghosts, Jim. Yes, it is, though. Yes, it is. And in this case, it definitely is, because it, the exact same this kind of shit so is happening with the ghost. Stupid fucking jealousy. She's a lovely girl, Mark. You're lucky. Twice blessed, I know. I can never forget Serena. You won't. Uh -huh. Having such a close relationship with your daughter's uh, would have been husband is kind of weird, but also kind of mature and adult, and I appreciate that. I wish all people were so mature with their relationships. He's in love with her, not me. I knew that I could never compare to her, but. Yeah, there's always a worry about being somebody's rebound, isn't it? I guess I was dumb to think that that would be enough. Why don't you postpone the ceremony? Okay, for it's just like a few weeks, you know? It takes some time to really think about this. It's, it's not about a few weeks or a few months. Serena is never going to let him go. She's never going to give him up, never going to let him down. See? I swear, in every episode, Melinda is dressed completely differently in bed. He's very handsome, your husband. Masculine. I like that. Stay away from him, Serena. You stay away from mine. I'll stay away from yours. Yeah, you just leap through that. Oh shit! I just had the weirdest dream. It wasn't a dream. Didn't I? No. I wish that's all it was. Why the fuck did she flash like that though? I never noticed that he actually had these kind of weird moments where he actually got to see or experience ghosts. It's kind of weird. And I like it. We were a couple since high school. We went to college together. It was just always the two of us. You know, marriage seemed like the next logical step. And then, uh, Serena got pregnant. I didn't know that she was pregnant. Me neither! And I completely forgot that there was going to be a plot twist, and that is the plot twist. Hey, you see Serena? Uh, yeah, yeah, she's over here. <laughs> That's why she feels queasy, also. 
And I assume maybe she's also pregnant. Should you be drinking? Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. What, what's going on, Serena? It's not like you. You wouldn't take a chance like that. I miscarried a week ago. What? You're just telling me this now. My wife and my best friend the dead. That's who that is. It's the best friend. And I kept going over that last conversation. What Josh had said. That's that's me. who it's gotta be. And what she must have gone through. It was like he understood her better than I did. I mean, and now they're gonna be together in the afterlife. I figured it out. And I was thinking about myself. Josh, you're if you don't know if you were in love with Serena, how do you know that you love Lisa? I don't know how to describe it. Being with her, it's like finding a perfect match. Like meeting someone who knows everything about you, good and bad. Someone you never have to hide who you are from. Someone that makes you feel safe. I had a lot of things with Serena. I did. But nothing like that. Man, that is kind of heartbreaking to hear. Especially if you were that someone to, to somebody else, but they weren't that to you. Do you remember that? That guy that I told you I dated in college. Yeah, Kevin somebody. Kevin McCall. It was a little more serious than dating. You know, you don't need to do this. I did. Kevin and I were really close. We talked about the future, the city we wanted to live in, how many kids we wanted to have. Okay, see, this is when I think maybe sharing everything is not... I'm not finished. I trusted him. More than anyone else. And then I told him about my... Secret. What I can do, and he didn't believe me. Broke your heart. He did. Yep. Then I met you. And I learned what love is supposed to be. You never doubted anything I told you, you just I've honestly had only one it right away, you know? Crush. Or should I say, like one time where I've actually face. felt love towards somebody else. And it's an emotion that I've never felt to, towards anybody else. Sure, I might find <laughs> other people pretty <laughs> or like them and, and their personality and everything, but there's only this one girl well, who I felt this emotion up, crazy this towards. Time. And I can't even describe it. And like, the other day I saw... Uh, a girl that looked very similar to her. I don't know if it was her or not. But it looked a lot like her. And the feelings that I remember feeling for her were back already. So I guess I have experienced love. And hopefully I will at some, day, uh, at some point in the future. Tell her I tried to show up home for the wedding. Here. She found you a poem. For the wedding. It's on the night table. Melinda. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should thank Serena, too. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Serena. All I can say is you better not blow it. He is a pretty good catch, all in all. She says good luck on your wedding. <sighs> I like Serena's <laughs> attitude. <laughs> Excuse me. Done my duty. Where's my light? Can you help me find someone? You're Josh. You're Josh, aren't you? Yeah. Come with me. Oh, she didn't cross. I thought she did. Serena. That's who she was looking for. That's what she needed. Someone's been looking for you. Everywhere for you. Are 
Are you all right? Okay, so that was episode 10. I'm gonna be honest, uh, neither of these two episodes was really anywhere near as good as the best of the other episodes that we've seen. So I guess we kind of blew our load with uh, episode 7 and 8. In that case, we got the two good episode, uh, episodes in one uh, go. So yeah, um, it wasn't a bad episode, it's still just like the last episode had its entertaining qualities to it, but overall neither one was really like as engaging and as uh, deep and as... It wasn't pulling me as much as uh, the good episodes of the previous uh, reactions. And that is a little annoying, but eh, you, can, you can't always win and that's fine. What, whatever show I react to, whenever I get to the middle of the season, it always kind of starts to go a little bland and a little interesting. So, it's nothing unusual. Hopefully, the next episodes are going to be more fun. But it is going to be, from my perspective, probably going to be a couple of weeks before I get back to continue with, uh, with, with my reaction. Because right now, I've recorded five episode reactions and I plan on releasing only one per week. So, we've recorded for about a month uh months um, a month's worth of reactions for this but yeah um i honestly can't say whether this was better or worse than the previous episode i feel like it was a little worse because it didn't have as interesting or unique qualities as episode 9 and it just didn't really have much to react to even so yeah i don't know it wasn't bad but it definitely wasn't as exciting as the previous episode. But I did like Serena's personality, so there's that. Yeah. Um, if we go by the rating for episode 9 being the more accurate 7.3 out of 10, then I think we're going to go with 7.2 as the more accurate rating for this one, or potentially 8.2. You pick your rating. I'm going to be probably going to be toning down the ratings a little bit uh, now, so we can actually properly rate the episodes and not have to rate uh, the really good episodes down the line with like a 10 or 11 out of 10. So yeah, um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about this, uh, but I am curious to uh, read what do you guys think about these two episodes, so comment your thoughts down below and let's have a discussion about it. And also before in this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my currently one patron on Patreon, Deadpool. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it, it really means a lot to me that you have decided to support me, you have continued to support me for such a long time, I hope you continue to enjoy my content and continue to support me going forward. Thank you very much. And now, before we end this video, I just want to talk about something uh, to you guys very quickly, um, which some of you may or may have not noticed before or know about me, that being the fact that I am trans. And yes, this may come uh, as shocking uh, to some of you because I don't really flaunt it that much on my channel, or at least I feel like I don't. Um, outside of like my K-pop reactions, which is where I feel like the most comfortable being myself like this. And yeah, I am in fact trans. Um, I'm not necessarily full on uh, male to female, but I heavily want to transition to being pretty female. I do consider myself more non-binary though, or maybe gender fluid would be the best descriptor as well, because I do have occasional moments where I feel fine being like just a normal guy, but most of the time, like right now, I do feel very dysphoric. Um, and that's why I'm asking you guys for any help that you can give me, because my situation right now, I don't really see any way out of outside of you guys' help because and this is gonna be kept short and concise I live with my parents they're never going to accept me as a trans person they, they just never will and as a matter of fact back when I started the YouTube channel I was actually kind of slightly starting my transition back then with like starting to grow out my hair um, I even got to DIY HRT, but because my parents started noticing certain things like uh, uh, my behavior had changed a lot and my 
clothes had changed a lot i kind of had to stop doing that because they were constantly nagging me about cutting my hair and just started to kind of be threatening in a certain way and felt like they were ashamed of me and everything and that just kind of that kind of stress just tired me out to the point where i just gave up but as dysphoria goes it just doesn't go away you know i still feel like this and in fact it's somewhat been intensifying again recently so i just wanted to share this with you guys and again i would really appreciate any amount of support you can give me in regards to this because um i just don't see any way out of this because even if i mo uh, moved out of my parents house and got my, myself a job and everything that's just not gonna work for long-term uh planning because once i transition it's like i probably will not be able to get myself a job because my country is very transphobic nobody gives a shit about lgbt people at all so there's not even much i can do even in terms of transitioning here so yeah i don't know i just would appreciate any amount of support you can give me uh, be it monetarily or in any way otherwise and this is not about uh, boosting my channel or anything or guilt tripping you with my sob story i just wanted to get this off my chest and make my subscribers aware of the situation that i am in and that i would appreciate anything that you guys can help me out with it would mean literally everything like for example uh, a friend that i made after starting this youtube channel my good friend Yuri has been helping me out a lot and I genuinely might have not been here if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him showing up and befriending me. So yeah, this just went a little bit longer than I, I intended, but I would just uh, really appreciate anything you can support me with. That's kind of ultimately what I'm trying to say. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the links in the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me over there and to my Wattpad where I post my stories, because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you want to enjoy my stories or simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to my Patreon where you can pledge to support and help get the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine, you can see help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!